There was one more thing we needed to learn in section 6.4, and that is finding the domain of a logarithm. Now, if you remember from last time, we discussed that a logarithm cannot be zero or negative. So when you're finding the domain of a logarithm, for example, f of x equals log base 2 of x plus 3, you have to remember that the part you're taking a logarithm of must always be greater than 0. So to find the domain of this, all we have to do is take the portion that would be plugged into the logarithm that's being taken the log of that number and set it greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to take that part right there and set that greater than zero. And I think I said equal to, which was not correct. Just greater than zero, because it cannot be zero. So we subtract the three for both sides, and x must therefore be greater than negative three. There's the domain. It could, of course, be written in um, interval notation if you'd like to. That would be done with a parenthesis, negative three, comma, infinity. Okay, let's try another one. In this one, we have the absolute value of a number x. Now, if you remember what absolute value does, it always makes a number positive. So, in this case, it doesn't matter if we plug in a negative or a positive, because regardless, we will end up with a positive that we're plugging into the logarithm, which is great. There is only one number then that won't work, and that is, of course, that a logarithm also cannot, you cannot plug in zero into a logarithm. So the absolute value of zero is still just zero. So in this case, x simply cannot equal zero, and that's the domain. This last example is harder, and it's based on something we actually learned in the last chapter. So just like we did in the first problem, we're going to take what would be plugged into the logarithm and we're going to set that greater than or equal to zero. But that means we are solving a rational inequality. So uh, if you remember from our last chapter, um, what we then have to do to solve this is to find our critical values and they would be found by taking the numerator and setting it equal to zero which of course means x would equal negative one so there's one of the critical values and taking the denominator and setting that equal to zero so one minus x equals zero this time I'm going to move the x over to the other side, which means x would equal 1. So our critical values are negative 1 and 1. And if you recall, negative 1 is going to be an x-intercept. And the positive 1 will actually be an asymptote. In this case, it really doesn't matter which one is which, because there's no equals to in, equal to in our problem. It's just all greater than. So our intervals will all be open intervals. So now we set up intervals between our critical values from negative infinity to positive infinity. And each of the intervals will open and close with parentheses because there are no equal to in this problem. Um, I believe that would be correct right there. So now we need to test our intervals. So we would plug in a number in each interval to test and go up to our original problem, plug in a negative 2. 1 plus a negative 2 is a negative 1. And then 1 minus a negative 2 would be a positive 3. So that one's obviously negative, which is not greater than 0. We, obviously, we need it in order for it to be greater than 0. We need positive answers, right? So when we plug in 0, we end up with 1 over 1, which is a positive answer. And then when we plug in 2, we get 3 over negative 1, which is a negative answer.
So the domain for this particular problem would only be from negative 1 to 1. Those are the only numbers that would work. So when we say between negative 1 and 1, that doesn't just mean 0. That means like negative 0.9999 and negative 0.5 and 0 and 0.5 and 0.9. You get the idea. So you have to stop.